Hi, so my name is Justin Martinstein. I'm one of the co-organizers behind Ignite Seattle, and I love eggs. Specifically, I love poached eggs. Uh, I think eggs are amazing. Uh, eggs are one of the, are extremely diverse food. You can uh, bake them, you can boil them, you can fry them, you can poach them. Um, eggs are about, uh, the average American eats about 250 eggs a year, and eggs are also one of the most nutritionally uh, dense uh, types of food available. Um, there's a slide coming up. It's got a lot of numbers on it. I'm not going to read all the numbers on there. Eggs are mostly protein and fat and water. Um, but what I mostly want you to focus on there is that eggs are actually full of science. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So uh, to cook a poached egg, really quickly, you take a one egg, you crack it into a small dish, you dip it into a pot of barely simmering water, and you cook it for about three to four minutes. You take it out with a slotted spoon, and then you put it into a bowl uh, with a paper towel, and then you let it drain, and you eat it. And if you have practiced, and if you are a, a semi-professional photographer, you're going to get something that looks a little bit like this, where you have uh, a firm egg white, and then uh, egg yolk that gets a little bit runny, uh, but, it's, but it's cooked. Um, yeah, and that's it. It's not... I mean, it's, not, it's, it's fairly simple. It's not, it's not a really hard process, but it does take a little bit of practice and it takes a little bit of learning and there's a little bit more we have to talk about. So to me, personally, I believe that cooking is basically chemistry and a poached egg is, is, the, is the purest form of that. Uh, you're taking an egg, you're applying heat through, uh, through water, and then you're changing the nature of the proteins underneath. Um, and th to me, this is, this is fascinating, this is interesting. And I've completely forgotten, ah, the next slide, okay. So we start with the fresh egg. This is the most important thing, and, I, and I'm learning this now, this is the most important thing to, to poaching an egg, because with a fresh egg, you're gonna see up in the upper right-hand corner, uh, yeah, upper right-hand corner. The albumin is going to be thicker on a, on a fresh egg, and it's not going to spread out as much when you dip it into a pot of water. Same thing, like I mentioned earlier, when you crack it into a dish rather than putting it directly into the pot, because if you cracked it directly into the pot, it's going to spread out, and it's going to make a giant mess. You want to simmer it, or just barely underneath a simmer. You don't want to boil it, because the boiling creates a lot of turbulence in the water, and the egg is going to swirl around, and it's going to get all messed up. What that means is you're going to want a temperature of about 190 degrees in the water. And that number right beneath that, that's, that's really the key number that we're going for here. We want the temperature of the egg to be 147 degrees, roundabouts. Uh, you can go about one or two degrees on either side of that, but that's about it. Um, the interesting thing is that um, if you can get a water bath that actually holds that temperature of 147 degrees, you can cook that egg for as long as you want, and it will still come out perfect. And we're going to talk about that in, in just a minute. Um, Obviously, the, the cooking time doesn't matter as much. Um, if, you, if, you leave the temp if you leave the heat on, um, then you're gonna, it's going to cook faster. But if you turn the heat off, what's going to happen is, uh, is it takes longer to cook, but you've got a little bit more wiggle room, and, uh, and it, you have less of a chance of overcooking it. Personally, I like, to I like to leave the heat on and cook it faster and just watch that thing. So this is what happens with the, proteins, with the proteins inside the egg as it cooks. The proteins start out as very tightly coiled little balls, and then as soon as the egg hits the water, they start to spread out, and they, they go through a process called denaturation. Uh, and so what happens is you start out with a uh, translucent egg, and then they, they cook, they spread out, and they create this mesh. Uh, and that's what you get something like that, which is the egg actually cooking in the water. Uh, one of the little tricks that I read, and people are kind of 50-50 on this, is adding vinegar to the water. Um, what that does is that also in, uh, increases the denaturation process. Uh, acid and alcohol also speed up denaturation. Uh, it's not as important as a fresh egg, uh, but it helps a little bit. Um, so like I just mentioned, uh, holding the egg at 147 degrees, uh, have people heard of sous vide cooking? Raise your hand real quick if you heard of sous vide cooking. Fair, meh, about third. Okay, so this is a, that's a rig up there that probably costs, I don't know, a few thousand dollars. Um, it's really outside the realm of home chefs, but you can build one for $75. If you Google uh, DIY sous vide at seattlefoodgeek.com, that's not me, that's another really cool guy. Um, but what that does is that holds that egg temperature uh, at 147 degrees. You can do this on a whole bunch of different foods and it, it creates some really interesting ways. Uh, and really that's, that's the takeaway here is that uh, Really, the trick is to practice. It's to try a bunch of different things. Uh, go home, eat a 
six pack of eggs is like $2, and just try it. Just put it in the water and try it. Um, if you want to learn more about just food science in general, I can't recommend On Food and Cooking nearly enough. Har Harold McGee is a genius, and I stole an embarrassing number of pictures uh, for that talk from smittenkitchen.com. So thank you very much.